The USS Michigan, when she was built and launched in 1843, really carries on that continuous naval presence that starts with the War of 1812. Throughout the 19th century, the crew, it reflected opportunities for people, especially immigrants coming in. The immigrants, uh, the names you see among crew members reflect the waves of immigration in the United States at the time. So this continuity of a naval presence in Erie is really important as our country moves into the 20th century and we start to engage in world wars. Well, it was uh, the first iron-hulled vessel built for the U.S. Navy, the first iron-hulled vessel built anywhere in North America, uh, and one of the first steamships uh, built for the U.S. Navy, uh, late 1843 when the ship was launched. It stuck on the waves, which is not unusual that uh, uh, the, uh, the launching waves are built with not enough slope to them. And the first attempt to launch, you know, they knocked away all of the supports and it just uh, sat there and uh, the crowd was a little disappointed and everybody dispersed and because they, when they came back the next morning uh, a few of the workers had continued working on the project overnight when they wanted to redo the launch ceremony essentially the next morning they found it already afloat in the bay. Mostly during the Civil War she acted as a floating recruiting station. Probably about 6,000 recruits uh, for the U.S. Navy passed through her during the course of the Civil War. We have men known as Wolverine. We start to see that naval preparedness. The Navy starts working with the naval militias on the Great Lakes to prepare for the inevitable World War I. Our Wolverine crew are among the first men in Pennsylvania who actually go into service. The vessel is called USS Michigan, but as the Navy starts building other vessels, she lost her name. In 1905, she becomes the USS Wolverine, which happens to be the mascot for the state of Michigan. I always smile when I think about the technological changes. Here you have the grand old lady in commission 60 years, and here she is teaching the most up-to-date technology, I think in particular radio operators. Our Erie Naval Militia become trained in radio, uh, radio skills and there's no one to talk to. No one else on the Great Lakes has the technology to answer. And this is the training, that continuity, that naval presence you see. Erie's a Navy town.